Rotation timing is absolutely critical for fast swimming and backstroke. And unfortunately, rotational concepts in freestyle are often applied to backstroke, when in reality, backstroke rotation timing is completely different. In this video, I'm going to tell you everything you need to know about backstroke rotation timing, and I'm going to provide you several strategies that you can use to help your swimmers improve their backstroke timing. Hi everyone, Andrew here, helping you help your swimmers get faster. Backstroke rotation timing is actually quite different than freestyle rotation timing. And once we understand what's actually happening in backstroke rotation timing, we can start to develop strategies to help swimmers learn these skills quickly and easily. We're going to go over why backstroke timing matters. We're going to go over what backstroke timing looks like and what it is. We're going to go over why backstroke timing can be difficult to improve. And then we're going to go over my favorite strategies to improve backstroke timing. Finally, we'll cap it off with some backstroke sets that you can either implement immediately or modify to help your swimmers learn better rotational timing. So what's the big deal? Why does rotation timing matter? Well, there's only so much range of motion in the shoulder, and it's hard to get the arm back behind the body. So think about it. If you're laying on your back in the water and you try to get your hand really deep, it's really difficult to do that without rotating. And when swimmers are on their back, the arm needs to get down behind the body to get deep in the water so that they can create propulsion. And because the shoulder doesn't really have the range of motion to do that, we need to do something else. And that solution is rotation. So you can just stand here, and if you want to get your arm well behind your body, you can't just reach it back. You're going to have to rotate back, and all of a sudden, you have access to that range of motion. And so rotation creates the necessary range of motion. Now, the arm can get into an effective position to pull it, and it can stay in that effective position for a lot longer. That means stronger pulling actions. Stronger pulling actions mean more propulsion. More propulsion means more speed. So again, the reason swimmers rotate is to get into effective pulling positions. And if they don't, they're not going to be able to pull very effectively. They're not going to swim very fast. The drawback of rotation is that it takes time. And so more rotation is going to mean a slower stroke rate, and a slower stroke rate means less speed. And since speed is the name of the game, we only want swimmers to rotate as much as necessary to get into effective pulling positions and no more. So how can we minimize the amount of rotation while maximizing the impact of rotation? It all comes back to timing. If the rotation timing is effective, swimmers can get into better positions, they can get there faster, and they can get just as much repulsion in less time. And if they can do that, they're going to swim fast. So what actually is effective rotation timing in backstroke? Well, when the hand enters the water, there's going to be a quick downward rotation to the same side, and this is going to happen fast. And so it gets the swimmer into the position to pull effectively, and it does so really quickly. Remember, we need to get the arm underwater in order to create propulsion, and we need to get there in an effective position. Next, there's almost zero rotation through most of the pull. And so the swimmer, once they get into that position after the entry, they're going to stay there throughout the majority of the pull. The swimmer is going to stay rotated down to maintain effective pulling positions. If they rotate away, they're going to lose that effective position, and they're not going to be able to create as much propulsion. Then, as the pull finishes, there's going to be a fast rotation to the other side of the body, and we're going to start the same process all over again. And so while freestyle rotation tends to be relatively smooth and continuous, rotation in backstroke is intermittent and it's rapid. It's not gradual. It's not constant. It's quick and punctuated from side to side. There's very quick shifts in body position, and then there's an absence of movement, and then another really quick shift to the other side. And so rotation at the end of the pull is going to be paired with rotation upon entries. So as the pole finishes on one side and the arm enters on the other side, there's going to be a switch to that recovery side. And because the hand speed's really high at the end of the pole, the hand speed's really high at the entry, the momentum of the hands can be used to help swimmers switch sides. And when you use momentum, that means the shift is going to happen faster, which again is what we want, and it's going to take less energy, which again is what we want. More speed for less effort is definitely a great outcome. So we'll take a look at what's happening from under the water first. So as we see here upon entry, the body's going to rotate down, and then he's not going to move very much. Watch the torso. It's not moving. It's not moving. It's not moving. It's not moving. And then only when he finishes the stroke, that's when the rotation really happens. And so again, on the other side, he's going to pull through. He's going to pull through. Watch the back of his suit. It's not moving. It's not moving. And then at the end of the pull there, that's where it really starts to move. And it's happening at the same time as the opposite arm enters the water. So now he's back on this side, he's not moving, he's not moving, he's not moving, and then he's gonna switch again. Now we can see the back of his suit again, and now he's on the other side, he's not gonna be moving, he's not gonna be moving, he's not gonna be moving, and then bam, he switches, 
as the hand finishes and the other arm enters. So again, it's a quick shift from side to side. There's a delay of rotation during the pull itself. You see here, there's very, very, very little rotation during the actual pull itself. And that's so that the arm can stay down in the water and create a lot of propulsion. If he rotated away, he wouldn't be able to maintain that same effective position. So he's gonna stay down and now he's gotta to switch to the other side. So there's the rotation to the other side. So again, there's gonna be a quick rotation to one side, there's gonna be a pause as the pull happens, and then a quick rotation back to the original side. If we watch over the surface, what you'll see here is the shoulders are gonna drive down as the arm enters. So if we watch both these swimmers here, the arm's gonna drive in, the opposite shoulder is gonna pop up, indicating rotation, and then they're gonna slam the arm in, and the other side's gonna come up. So as the arms enter, that's driving the rotation, there's not much rotation, and then the other arm enters, and that drives rotation to the other side. And just like we saw with the underwater footage, there's limited rotation during the pull itself, and then at the end of the pull, and as the arms enter, there's a quick shift from side to side, and that's what effective rotation is all about. Now we'll talk about the challenge of helping swimmers improve their timing. If we can better understand the challenge, we're going to be able to design more effective solutions to actually help them improve. So the biggest challenge is that timing is precise and timing is subtle. It's difficult to describe what to do, and it's difficult to time the recovery and the pull at exactly the right moment to get that quick shift from side to side. Another big challenge is a lot of swimmers think that freestyle and backstroke timing are the same, and they try to rotate continuously rather than intermittently. And that's going to have a negative impact on the pull, and that's going to impair their ability to create speed. Another issue is if swimmers aren't able to switch sides fast enough because they can't get the timing right, they're going to have to start rotating earlier. And again, this is going to negatively impact the pull. And because timing is so precise and because it's so subtle, it can be difficult to explain exactly what swimmers need to do because we're not telling them what positions to get in. We're telling them how to perform certain movements in relation to other movements in time. And that can be a little bit more difficult to describe and it's more difficult for swimmers to understand. So we have to create solutions that overcome these challenges. Now it's time to start talking about the fun stuff. How do we actually help swimmers improve their backstroke timing? I'm gonna go over three activities that are particularly useful for helping swimmers understand the key positions and the key timing. And then we're gonna go over two performance strategies that can further accelerate learning. When helping swimmers learn effective backstroke timing, the place I like to start is with side pull. So the focus is on pulling straight back while on the side and without rotating. The goal here is to create sensory awareness. We're trying to help swimmers feel what it's like to pull on the side. We're trying to help swimmers feel what it's like to pull without rotation. And this is 100% an exaggeration. We're going well beyond what they actually need to do, but by creating an awareness of what exists well beyond what they need to do, it becomes a lot easier to do what they actually have to do. So again, this is about creating awareness and helping them feel these key movements. So by magnifying the amount of rotation and a complete lack of rotation, it's gonna be a lot easier to learn the skills that we actually want them to develop. So the execution here is pretty simple. They're gonna be on their side, they're not gonna rotate at all, they're gonna set up the stroke, and they're gonna pull straight back. So the big idea here is being on the side, getting the arm deep, creating an effective pulling position, and then just pulling straight back. They don't have to worry about rotation, they don't have to worry about the arm recovery, we're just giving them some sensory awareness of what it's like, what it feels like, to pull when they're rotated down, and to pull without rotating. Next, we're going to use delayed backstroke. So we're going to delay the rotation, but now we're going to do so in an exaggerated way within the context of full stroke swimming. Instead of just doing one arm at a time, both arms are involved. Now there's going to be arm recoveries. There's going to be rotation. We're a lot closer to regular backstroke swimming, but again, we're still exaggerating the delay in the rotation to help swimmers better feel what it's like. And again, if we can exaggerate things, we're more likely to create a change when they're actually swimming backstroke. The key here is that swimmers must complete the pull before they rotate. And again, this allows them to better feel what delayed rotation is like. And we're moving closer to full stroke swimming, which is going to make the transition of full stroke swimming while still executing effective skills a lot easier. So this is similar to side pull and that the swimmer is going to pull straight back without rotating, but then they're going to switch sides and they're going to move to the other side, recover the arm and do the same thing. So the key idea here is to get on the side, pull straight back, and then rotate. So we're trying to really separate the pull and the rotation, really exaggerate that separation, and that awareness is gonna help swimmers better learn, better figure out how to actually do it or do some version of it when they're swimming backstroke. 
The more we can help swimmers feel these skills and feel these skills in different ways, the more likely we're going to be able to create change. And so again, this is an exaggeration and this exaggeration can help them become more aware of what it's like to delay their rotation when they actually pull. So the previous two exercises really focused on what's happening under the water. Now we're going to try to influence what's happening over the water. We're going to do that with head up backstroke. And so as we talked about earlier, a fast rotation upon entry is key for effective rotation. And by using head up backstroke, it allows swimmers to feel how to use the recovery to drive the rotation. And so with a higher head position, the shoulder rotation has to be a lot more aggressive to get the hands in the right position. And so swimmers can learn to use the momentum of the arm recovery to swing the arm into position and then facilitate the rotation using the hand speed rather than just trying to twist the shoulders. So again, by exaggerating, by making things a little bit more difficult, we can help swimmers learn the key skills by overdoing what they're actually going to have to do when they swim regular backstroke. If they can be successful with overdoing it, doing what they actually need to do is going to be a lot simpler. So we watch here, the head's going to be up a little bit. It doesn't have to be up extremely high, but then the focus is on really driving the shoulders and swinging the arms into position. And you can see here, his shoulders are moving back and forth. He's really getting the arm in position and driving the rotation with the entry. And the more effective swimmers can be with this, the more they can do it at higher speeds and higher rates, the more effective they're going to be at doing it when swimming regular backstroke. Having discussed three different activities that you can use to help swimmers improve their timing, now we're gonna talk about two different strategies that you can use to help swimmers improve their timing regardless of the activity you choose to use. So the first up is resistance. When you use resistance, everything is going to be slowed down. And that's because of the added resistance. It simply takes more time to move through the pole. And this allows swimmers to get into the right position at slower speeds. So because everything's happening just a little bit slower, they have more time to react. They have more time to adjust. They have more time to feel it out. And so that way they can learn effective timing at high effort levels because they're still going to work hard to overcome the resistance, but it's happening at slower speeds. And so for swimmers that can't make it happen at really fast speeds, Doing stuff with resistance can help put them in a situation where they have time to figure it out. And once they can figure it out with the resistance, you can start to take the resistance away and let them figure it out with normal swimming. And because they're working at high effort levels, the transition to higher speed and higher effort levels is relatively smooth. It's not like they're swimming slow. Everything's just happening slower, even though they're working at high effort levels. Secondly, as we talked about earlier, effective rotation timing requires an aggressive switch from one side to the other and then back to the original side. And so if they have resistance, it's going to be more difficult to do that. And if they can develop a stronger switch, they can develop more strength in being able to switch from one side to the other. The faster they're going to be able to switch and the more reliably they're going to be able to switch when they're actually swimming without the resistance. So we're actually strength training the skill here. We're helping swimmers develop the skill and the strength to switch from side to side faster and more effectively. Lastly, if swimmers are getting in the right position with their timing, they're going to be able to execute a more effective pull. And because they have to overcome the resistance to create propulsion, and a more effective pull is going to be a lot more obvious due to the extra load. If they're in poor positions, it's going to be really difficult to work against the resistance. But if they're in effective positions, it's going to be a lot easier to work against the resistance, and they're going to be able to feel that. While it can help them feel when they are being effective, more importantly, it's going to help them really feel when they're not being effective because they simply won't be able to create nearly as much propulsion if they get the timing wrong. And so for all those reasons, resistance can be really effective at helping swimmers learn to improve their timing and backstroke. Our final strategy is to ask for performance. So whether that's stroke counts, stroke rates, speed, or some combination of the three, requiring performance is going to require change. Simply performing some of these activities can be useful in and of itself, but when you ask them to swim faster, swim longer, or swim with this specific stroke rate, they're going to have to really change and find ways to execute those drills, execute those activities within the parameters of the set. They can't just go through the motions. They've got to lock in and they've got to figure out a way to make it happen. So you can use the drills, the sensory activities, and then perform like the set below where it's three times 625s odd delay backstroke, even head up backstroke, and then a 50 backstroke minimized stroke count in time. Or you can actually have them perform during the sensory activities. So 625 side pull, odds are left, evens are right, minimize stroke count and then 50 backstroke, minimize stroke count in time. So by challenging regular swimming, you're going to get change. And by challenging the activities we described earlier, that helps swimmers become more aware of what they're doing. By challenging those as well, you're going to get change in those activities too. And again, what we're looking for is change. And by pushing swimmers with performance, and they don't have to be maximal performances by any means. They just have to encourage swimmers to swim differently. 
we're going to get better learning because swimmers are going to be asked to move through the water more effectively. So in almost all cases, I'm going to ask for performance in one way or another, simply because you get better engagement and you get better change. So now let's go over some sets that you can either implement or modify to help swimmers improve their timing. So we'll go three rounds through this. They're going to go 225 side pull with a parachute. They're going to build it. And then a 25 delay backstroke with a parachute build, 25 head up backstroke with a parachute build. Then they're going to go 250s is 25 side pull, 25 backstroke, 25 minute pine stroke count plus 25 strong. And then they'll do the same thing with delay backstroke, the same thing with head up backstroke, and then they'll finish it off with 100 backstroke solid effort to send one to three. So we're using the different drills and we're using the parachute to help increase the challenge and we're asking them to build speed as well. Then we're going into the 50s where they're minimizing stroke count and then they're backing that right up with a strong 25 backstroke. And then we'll finish it off with 100 backstroke, solid, descend one to three. So we're helping them feel the key skills with the drills. We're further challenging those drills with the parachute and the speed changes. And then we're giving them the opportunity to apply whatever they've learned, whatever they felt into regular backstroke swimming. And in combination, all those different aspects of the set provide swimmers with the best opportunity to learn these skills. This set is more of an endurance set. And so they're going to go three 200s, 50 delay backstroke plus 50 backstroke. They're going to descend one to three to strong at the same stroke count. Then they're going to go three rounds where they go 25 delay backstroke, build to fast. And then a 75 backstroke to send one to three to strong, but there's no stroke count there. Then three 200s as 25 delay plus 75 backstroke to send one to three to stronger at the same stroke count. And then three rounds, 25 delay backstroke fast and 75 backstroke to send one to three to stronger. So we're really focusing on one drill here. We're helping swimmers learn to delay the rotation when they pull. And we're really putting pressure on them to learn how to swim effectively. So they're descending at the same stroke count. They're building to fast and they're actually going fast in that last section. So they're learning to execute this skill at higher and higher performance levels. And they have the opportunity to try to figure it out and apply what they're learning during that drill into the regular backstroke swimming. And they're doing it all while working relatively hard. So a great way to incorporate these concepts into a relatively traditional endurance set. This third and final set is geared more towards improving these skills at faster speeds. So they're going to go two rounds through. They're going to start off with six efforts. The odds are 25 delay backstroke with a parachute, minimize stroke count and time. And then they're going to go eight cycles of head up backstroke with a parachute fast. They'll do that pair three times. Then they're going 425s with a parachute backstroke, minimize stroke count and time. And then a 25 delay backstroke without the parachute, minimize stroke count and time. 25 head up backstroke, minimize stroke count and time. And then 25 backstroke, minimize stroke count and time. And a 25 backstroke fast. We're using the two drills to improve rotation, both from the bottom in terms of working on the delay aspect of the pull and also from the top in terms of working on the rotation upon entry. And we're doing it with a performance expectation that swimmers stay really long and they try to go really fast. Then we give swimmers the opportunity to put it all together with a regular 25 backstroke fast. So by performing these activities at higher speeds, we're helping them figure out how to execute these skills while swimming really, really fast. And the better they can do that, the faster they're going to swim. So rotation is critical in backstroke to create extra range of motion so that swimmers can pull effectively. So swimmers need to rotate at the right time to maximize the benefit while minimizing the amount of rotation that's necessary. And by using side pull, delay backstroke, and head up backstroke, we can really help swimmers feel these key skills. And then we can challenge those skills by using resistance and asking for performance to really take what they learn to the next level. And at that point, all you have to do is write some sets that put these ideas into practice to help your swimmers learn effective backstroke timing. And if they can learn effective backstroke timing, they're going to swim fast. Hope that was helpful. And as always, keep it simple.